Hello there, this is Dana from DanaRCurie.com, author, speaker, survivor, advocate, and certified trauma recovery coach. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new content. And if you are returning, welcome back. It's great to have you here. Today's topic is called Narcissist Nightmares how abuse and trauma impact your sleep. And we're going to even take it even further because obviously narcissistic abuse and any type of very traumatic events will impact our body. It will impact our brain. It will impact our relationships, our finances, and every faucet of our lives. Today, we are going to focus a bit more on sleep disturbances, insomnia, and different things that can happen, especially having nightmares of the narcissist or the flying monkeys and or the perpetrators. And so have you personally suffered bad dreams or night terrors or really awful dreams about the narcissist, the flying monkeys or any predators? If so, share the comments down below. And we're going to talk about different things. So first let's focus on what is narcissistic abuse? So according to medcircle.com, they say narcissistic abuse refers to the emotional, physical, sexual, or financial forms of abuse that a narcissist inflicts on others. This abuse can range from mild put downs to severe life-threatening violence. Narcissistic abuse can include gaslighting, manipulation, harassment, blame shifting, coercive control, and false accusations about you. This type of extremely controlling and manipulative behavior can be subtle, deliberate, and with the intent to harm you. According to sleepfoundation.org, they state, trauma is an experience that has lasting negative effects on an individual's well-being and their ability to function. A single traumatic event can lead to psychological trauma, or it can build up over time in response to ongoing stress. In research, it has been stated that almost 90% of people are exposed to at least one potentially traumatic event in their lives. Um, when I was in school for certified trauma recovery coaching, we were taught that in statistics, at least 70% of our worldwide population has experienced at least one traumatic event. Obviously, different resources and websites can have different statistics on this, but we all know we are not exempt from abuse and trauma. So trauma from narcissistic abuse or any other kind of damaging toxic relationship is called relational trauma. Meaning the trauma has been something between you and another person and it does involve your relationship with that other person. The kind of betrayal trauma caused from narcissistic abuse can create damaging issues of trust in other relationships. Now, the one thing I want to say is there's a lot of people in that. I've seen this online all the time where they're like, oh, you know, there's all these people who have trust issues. And then I always come back with, you know, it's really not that we have a trust issue. It's that there's so many people who have betrayed us and lied to us. So we know that the narcissist and the flying monkeys are masters of manipulation and they are pathological liars. If you have suffered narcissistic abuse, it is common and it is normal to experience nightmares or bad dreams in your sleep about the narcissist, about the flying monkeys, and or other perpetrators. During and after narcissistic abuse, your amygdala will be overactive. Your body gets flooded by cortisol and other hormones. The amygdala is the part of the brain primarily involved in emotions, your memories, and the flight, fight, freeze response. It is located near the base of the brain. In your sleep or after a nightmare about a narcissist or other perpetrator, you may thrash, scream, or cry. 
you can become triggered in your sleep by the disturbing dream of the narcissist. So the truth is, yes, we can be triggered by our dreams. And even in our sleep, we can have a trauma response. We could have flashbacks, dissociation, and all kind of different traumatic experiences. And so this is really common. It's something I don't see too many people talking about, which is why I am having this video today. On the website, sleepfoundation.org, they state, sleep issues are common after a traumatic experience. Alertness and hyperarousal related to the effects of the body stress response often contribute to the symptoms of insomnia. Many people have difficulty falling asleep, waking up often during the night, or they may have trouble falling back to sleep after a traumatic event. They go onward to state, distressing dreams and nightmares are common to trauma. Survivors often have dreams about the traumatic event that either directly replay the experience or contain traumatic related emotions, content, and symbols. Researchers hypothesize that trauma-related dreams are caused by the brain's fear response combined with hyperarousal and may represent the mind's attempt at integrating a traumatic experience. In my own experience, so now we're just going to kind of keep it real. I'm going to be authentic. My own personal experiences with child abuse, narcissistic abuse, and sexual assault. So in my past experiences, I noticed that I was having a lot of bad dreams at night and some could be called nightmares or night terrors. It may have been about the rapist, the narcissist, the flying monkeys or other perpetrators. And so back in 2018, after I went no contact with my narcissistic mother in 2018, and I also went no contact with the flying monkey siblings and the different relatives, I did notice that I was having a lot more vivid nightmares and bad dreams about them, and they would show up in my dream. And I think this is just the subconscious mind is just trying to process the trauma, trying to process all the gaslighting, all the manipulation, all the years of being bullied into silence, you know, all of the horrible violence and abuse. And then what I could say that I noticed that was what I call the brilliant moment. You know you are healing when dot, 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 when your dreams change. And so what happened was about a year ago, I noticed my dreams took a major shift. So I no longer was waking up like screaming and crying and having nightmares about the narcissist and the flying monkeys or any perpetrators. No, it all stopped and things changed. And this is the beauty of when your subconscious mind is in attunement and in alignment with your conscious mind. So what happened was like the subconscious mind over here and the conscious mind over here come together hand in hand and now I'm in alignment. And what happened was I noticed this about a year ago and it's still happening today. My dreams had a drastic shift. What changed was I no longer had a trauma response in my sleep. I no longer was having nightmares about the narcissist, the rapist, uh, the flying monkey sibling. They're having these horrible, horrible dreams about these perpetrators who were violating me. Instead, what happened is this. So if I would have a dream and then there is the flying monkeys, there is the narcissist, or there is any of the perpetrators, the new theme now, I am calm, I am cool, I am collect. And I am aware that I do not have any emotional attachment to these people anymore. So it's almost like my subconscious mind and my conscious mind now have come together in unity where I am even in my sleep aware that I am not in a relationship with a narcissist anymore. I am no longer in a relationship with my toxic abusive siblings and their family members anymore. And even if it's like, say, the past sexual assaults, even with that, obviously, no, I'm not in communication with any of these perpetrators. But 
I'm, I'm no longer triggered. I'm calm now. My body now knows in my sleep subconsciously that I have walked away from these very toxic dynamics. And I think the beauty is you know you're healing when, ha, huh, you get better sleep. When you finally are at a place in your life where you can breathe again, where you realize, yes, I've done the healing work. Yes, I've processed the past pain and the trauma and the triggers and everything that happened, all this coercive control and manipulation and gaslighting. And now my body, even in my sleep, is saying, no, you're not triggering me. You're not pushing my buttons anymore. I am cool, I am calm, and I am walking away every single time in my sleep from these people. And that is such an amazing accomplishment for me. And it just really does reveal how much healing has taken place. And so sleep is becoming better for me, and I hope that this helps you and can help improve your sleep too. Let's move onward to the rest of this content. And so what is now happening is that when we are doing the healing work, when we are doing the grief and the trauma work, when we are able to process what we've been through and work with someone who could offer us emotional support and we awaken to the truth about abuse, we can understand that even in our sleep, we could build awareness and awaken our own subconscious minds to what is best for us and to not participate in the crazy making drama and trauma that these instigators do. And we could end up having these dreams where we're calm. And we're not participating in the crazy making. And we're actually walking away and ending the cycle of abuse. It is the most brilliant moment of my life. And I so hope that you could calm your nervous system and learn different ways that you could come back into your body and reclaim your personal power and have improved sleep. So here are some tips in regard to sleeping and how to improve your sleep, especially if you do have nightmares and bad dreams, whether it is the narcissist, the flying monkeys, or some perpetrators, or a totally different situation. Number one, create a consistent bedtime routine. Try to go to bed around the same time each night. If you wake up from a nightmare about the narcissist or other perpetrators, remind yourself that you are safe. Number three, learn to ground yourself. Get centered. Use your five senses, which is sight, sound, taste, touch, and scent. Say out loud the things that you see visually, that you hear, that you can smell, that you could taste, etc., etc. So we're using our five senses. State five things that you could see. State four things that you can touch. State three things you hear two things that you can smell and state one thing that you can taste. And this is how we get back into our body, especially if someone is disassociating, they're having this outer body experience, they might be in a, a fear mode or freeze or flight. So many different trauma responses can take place even in our sleep. And so when you wake up, remind yourself you are safe, you're not there anymore. Number four, Consider using white noise or a fan to drown out the noise in your home. In the winter, you could just have the fan facing a different direction so it's not um, directed at you. And next would be use calming essential oils. You could rub a few drops on your feet. You could diffuse them. Um, some helpful essential oils for sleep include lavender, frankincense, and sandalwood. Number six, focus on your breathing techniques. Take a slow, deep first breath by inhaling. Hold for three seconds and then exhale for three seconds. So you're basically taking a deep breath in, hold, 
and then release. Doing these breathing techniques can really calm your nervous system, help you get back into your body, reconnect to who you are, body, mind, and soul. It's super beneficial. Next is number seven, seek emotional support for learning how to express, process, and work through your traumatic events and work with a trauma-informed professional, someone in the mental health industry who definitely is experienced, knowledgeable, and educated about the type of abuse you have experienced. For example, you want someone who understands narcissistic abuse, flying monkeys, and so forth. You want someone who understands. And so, Keep in mind, not every therapist is educated about narcissistic abuse, uh, the family toxic enmeshment, toxic siblings, family estrangement. Do your research, interview the person before you work with them to make sure they are an ideal match for you. Did you ever struggle with bad dreams or nightmares at night? Was it about the flying monkeys, the narcissist or a perpetrator? How do you cope if you have these bad dreams? Share what has helped you overcome the bad sleep patterns, the insomnia, the night terrors, and the nightmares of the narcissist. Keep the comments going down below. And if you need emotional support, please reach out to me at DanaArcuri.com. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, keep the comments going, and I wish all of you the best along your healing journey. Thank you and have a beautiful day.